Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing the first garden tour of the 2023 gardening season in my new raised bed garden at the new property. So my original thought was to do a combination tour of this garden as well as my current home garden, but I don't think that my country Wi-Fi can handle an hour long video. So I am going to split them up. And it is going to be quite interesting because we're currently not even living at our house right now. So we have listed our house and there have been 24 booked showings on it. And so we decided not to live there for a few days while that's all happening. So I haven't even been in the garden in about four days. So when I do go there, it's going to be a surprise for me and for you. So today I thought that we would walk through this garden, have a look to see what I've planted, what's growing, how everything is doing. I want to plant some more bean seeds and my tomato plants need a lot of pruning and they need to be tied up because they are growing great. So let's get started. Let's start in the perennial bed area with the asparagus. So this is week four, I believe, or four and a half for these asparagus beds. So I did two perennial beds filled with asparagus. I think I did 15 crowns in each one and I'm pretty happy with the results that I'm getting here. So this one here beside me is probably about two feet tall and the bed is just covered in them. So I am really excited for next year. So the first year you don't want to um, harvest any of your asparagus. You really want to wait till the you really want to wait till the third year. So next year will be my second year, and really I'll probably harvest a couple here and there, but that will be it because I really want the root system of these asparagus plants to really grow, expand, stretch out get really strong so that on year three, I can do a good harvest. Now, these beds are doing great. Let's take a look at the strawberry beds because they're not as great. Here's a look at the strawberry bed that I planted the Carolina white strawberry crowns in. Now, I don't know if you're wondering where the strawberries are, but I sure am. Nothing is growing here, absolutely nothing. And I would be really interested if any of you have grown these before. It's been four and a half weeks. Shouldn't something have come up before? I've never planted this type of strawberry before, so I'm not really sure, but I kind of feel like something should be coming up by now. So this here is the bed that I planted the strawberry plants in, and these are berries galore white, and they're ever bearing. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of brown, and I don't know if that's because this area of the garden, or really the whole garden, receives so much sun that it's just burning the leaves. <sighs> I, I want to say that that can't really be the reason because up until about five days ago, these plants were so lush and green and now all of a sudden they're really starting to turn brown. The other thing is, is that something has been getting into this bed and has been eating some of my strawberries because last night when I was here, I noticed that there were some really nice red ones and I actually told my husband not to eat them because I wanted to show you how great they looked and they're gone. So I find that a little bit interesting. Now having said that, I mean it looks like the plants are, produ are producing even though they seem to be struggling with the heat that we're having right now. And again, these plants have been in their beds, in these beds for about four and a half weeks. Here is bed number one in my garden planner. And in the front here, you'll see I've planted eight 
bell peppers. I don't know exactly what varieties they are. I planted so, or I started so many pepper plants from seeds and then I killed probably 50 of them, allowing them to get too close to my lights. I just had so much going on that I completely lost track. I was turning on the lights, turning off the lights, watering, and not really paying attention to how close they were getting. So the reason that I've put these eight plants in the front of the box is because they will get the most sun being there and they are the slowest growing um, plant or variety in this bed. So the onions are behind and I am so happy to see that they are growing really good right now. Again, I didn't really take care of my onion seedlings this year and when I planted them out, I just hoped and prayed that everything would work out because they looked really sickly looking. So next to the onions, I did beets and I don't know what's going on with my beets this year, but um, the germination rate on my beets has not been great in any of the boxes and not just in this garden, but at my house garden as well. So it's a little bit uh, discouraging, but you know, every garden season you have something that gives you a little bit more trouble than the year before. So in the front here, we have spaghetti squash that are gonna be growing on the arch trellis. And I've used these little tags here. I got them off of Amazon and I thought that this would work perfectly for helping me to remember what I've planted there until they start producing. Once they start producing, I'll know exactly what they are, but until then, sometimes I forget. So if we go over to bed number two, and again, maybe I need to label these with, uh, with something else other than bed number one and bed number two. So I'm gonna have to uh, fix that one over there because the little tendrils are holding on to uh, the arch trellis there and I can't move it with one hand. And so these are sweet dumpling squash and they seem to be doing really good, nice and green. So it's interesting that like these beds are nice and green, but those strawberry plants are turning brown. If you know what that could be, please let me know. So here we have zucchini and I'm not sure, um, I'm not actually sure what variety that is. It could be um, blue beauty or it could be yellow. Although if I just go over here, I can actually see that this one is yellow. So I'm assuming that this zucchini one is probably the be blue beauty one. I believe that's the right name for it. So this here is mortgage lifter and it totally needs to be pruned and put up onto the trellis. So let's do that. Let's get all of these tomato plants fixed up and then we can move on. I thought it would take a minute to let you know what I'm going to be doing. So some of my tomato plants need to be um, tied up to the trellis. They've gotten tall enough that they can reach the trellis. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. And I'm also going to be removing the suckers. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring you down close and show you on one of the plants. And then I am going to go speedy and do the rest because the black flies and the mosquitoes are coming out. It is almost dinner time and they think I'm the dinner. So um, I wanna make sure that I show you exactly what I'm doing. The other thing besides tying them up that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be removing the uh, suckers from the armpit of the plant. And so basically there is one leader stem and then it has the arms, the branches that come off of it. And when you have the main stem and a branch that comes out, the suckers usually grow in that area that we call the armpit. And so I want to heavily prune right up to the um, trellis to make sure that there is good airflow coming through my beds and that the plants don't get sick.
This is a really good one for me to show you. I'm just gonna turn you over a little bit. Um, the reason that I say that is right here in front of you, you'll see. So this is the main stem. This is the arm or the branch. And then this one right in between is the sucker. And so most of the time they will just pull off so easy when they're little like this. Now, the other thing that I want to show, oh, and there's another one right up here. There we go. The other thing that I want to talk about is pruning. So I am actually going to come in with my scissors and I am just going to take that. I'm also going to take the bottom ones and I'm just going to leave them on top of the bed. And then you'll see that now I have this nice long stem. There's tons of space for airflow to get in there at the plant to make sure that it doesn't get sick. And so I'm just going to look here. I want to make sure that there aren't any other um, suckers that I want to take out. And I think this one is good. So I think what I'm going to do is use my nylon rope and I am just going to place a little bit around the stem here and attach it to the trellis so that it can start training it to come onto the trellis. The great thing about using this nylon rope is that it will grow with your plant. So as the stem of the tomato gets bigger, this is so stretchy that it will not constrict around the actual stem, cutting it off. Now, I don't know if some of you have done that before, but I have used different material that has actually decapitated my tomato plants because they've grown too big and the material I used wasn't forgiving enough. And so I'm just going to place that on here and then I am going to pull it up. And that's it. The tomato plants that have now been pruned and tied up. And so it is going to just help them to find their way to that trellis. This one here is a really good example of just wanting to train it to go up to the trellis. It was actually laying down on the wood shavings and I just wanna make sure that uh, the bugs don't get at it. So over here, we have a couple pepper plants and then along this side here, we have cucumbers that are gonna be growing up on the trellis and they are early spring cucumbers. And so they will be growing up all along on this trellis here. So on that side, we have the early uh, spring cucumber and on this side, we have the Armenian cucumber, and so we have four of them on this side, and uh, the two in the front here look very good, very healthy. They seem to be doing well. The two in the back seem to be a little bit more stunted. So in the back of this bed here, um, right in the back, so you'll see like back here, back here, and there, all along I have sunflowers. So I went to the nursery and saw that they had sunflowers there and thought, why not plant them in one of my beds? The thing is, all it said on it was sunflower, so I don't even know the variety. I don't know how big they're going to get. I'm just gonna take the risk that it is going to look beautiful. So I do have some pepper plants in here. And if I get real close, you'll see that I have a couple little peppers starting to grow as well. So I always leave my peppers on the plants. I always get two harvests out of them. So I will come along probably in a month and harvest a whole basket of green peppers that I'll slice up and put in the freezer and then they will produce a second harvest for me. 
So in the front here, I have my onions. And again, they are doing so much better than they were. I'm, they actually need a haircut. So I'm going to have to do that to uh, strengthen up the bulbs and make sure that the onions are not sending all of their energy into that greens. So right down here, this is an orange hat tomato. It's just a tiny little thing. It produces really small little tomatoes, but they are so sweet and great for snacking on while you're in the garden. So here we have uh, Solar Flare, we have Juliet, we have Blush Tiger, and they are going to be growing on this arch trellis. And I just think that is going to be beautiful. So on the other side over here, I have three different um, cherry tomato types that I have planted there. And I just thought that having six different colors growing up on this trellis would just be beautiful. And so I have... Let's see here, black strawberry, yellow pear, and chocolate cherry. And so in this bed here, um, we have our tomatoes that are being trellised with this pipe at the top here. I just did a video on this. If you haven't seen it, um, go back. This one will be out before the garden tour. Just explaining a couple different trellis methods that I'm using for my tomatoes. And this is one of them. And so in the front here, I have my beets. They seem to be doing a little bit better over here, but you'll notice that there are gaps where the seeds just didn't germinate. And I planted them fairly heavy. I put two seeds for every, I'm gonna say like one and a half to two inches. So there really should be a lot more here than there is. So on this trellis here, just take a look. We have buttercup squash, which is one of my absolute favorite um, squashes. Now, I don't know what is going on here. Um, huh, I don't know what is going on with my leaves. So that's interesting. I've never seen that before. If you've seen that before, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think that could be. Um, let me just see here. This one here can probably get put up. I'll do that when I have two hands. <laughs> okay, so in this bed over here, we have baby Pam squash or baby Pam pumpkin. And so I thought that would be really pretty to have orange and green um, squash and pumpkins growing on this arch trellis. And they seem to be doing really well. They seem to be nice and green and lush, so I'm happy with that. Um, in this bed here, we have all along the center here is turnip. And the I can't remember right now what type of turnip it is but they do resemble the same shape as a carrot and so i thought that that would be um, really nice just to grow something different um, in the back we have my tomatoes which again need to be uh, pruned and tied up and then in the front we have peppers and like i said um, I grew a lot of peppers, but I also killed a lot this year. And so when I planted my peppers out, I basically just planted them out and called them bell peppers, even though there are a few varieties. So these squash plants here that are growing amazing right now are Rapaconte, and they are going to be growing up on this trellis. And so on the other side I have tromboncino which both both types of plants are just looking beautiful and so variegated so very pretty now these pepper plants here seem to be a little bit um, tired almost like they need some more water 
Um, they are paprika. I decided to put all my paprikas together. And then in behind them are my onions. Now you'll notice that these onions over here are not as healthy as the other two locations. Again, the ones that I have at my house aren't doing great either. They look more like these ones. And then that brings us to the carrots. Now, I don't know what is going on with carrots this year, but the carrots here and the carrots at my house, neither of them are doing great. So I'm not sure what it is that's different. It hasn't rained here in, oh, I want to say it hasn't rained in like two weeks. And the weird thing about where I live is it will rain in town, but out here, north of the town, for whatever reason, it won't rain or it'll do vice versa. And so we haven't had much rain, which means that I've had to <laughs> lug buckets from the pond up here to water the garden. This here is bed seven. And you'll notice that there is some space on either side of this um, zucchini plant. And the reason for that is I have some plants at home. I have some uh, cauliflower that I wanna plant there. But um, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of showings at the house. And when I went there this morning uh, to quickly turn on all the lights in the house, I forgot to grab the tray of plants. So that is going to have to be a tomorrow problem. <laughs> on the end here, we have cilantro and it smells so good. The thing about cilantro is you're usually in one of two camps. You're either in the camp that you love eating it or you're in the camp that you hate eating it because it has a metal taste. I like the smell of it but I can't take eating a lot of it. I'll eat it in some foods, but if it's overpowering, it actually tastes like fridge burn or metal to me. So I'm in that camp. In the back, we have tomatoes. Again, I need to go through them all and prune and tie up. Now, here I have beans. And so I left this bag here. This are these are the Chinese red noodles I thought that it would be really cool to see those beans growing on this arch trellis I've never grown these before but I have to say that I thought that bean plants grew faster than they're growing now I'm not here every day and I just don't think that these bean plants are growing at the speed that they should be growing at I, and maybe I'm just comparing them to black beans. I just found that the black beans grew so much faster than these are. So I think I'm going to plant some more seeds in between. Now that could be detrimental to the plants once they really start taking off or it could be a good thing. I'm not really sure. So on this side here, I have um, yard long beans and I am going to again throw a few more in there i just don't feel like they are the size that they should be i don't really see a lot of growth in them so leave me some comments below let me know um look at this chocolate cherry tomato plant like it is already over two feet tall now I haven't pruned and I've only stuck it into the trellis I haven't tied it up or anything like that again I have some pepper plants here I have another zucchini I'm not sure which one this is it could be green it could be yellow it could be round I I don't have my planner on me to look. I did write it down though. So on the end of this box, I do have another cilantro. Um, and you know, you might be wondering why I'm growing two cilantro plants when I don't particularly like eating it. Um, and I'm growing it because I want to dry it and put it into the chicken coop because I do like the way it smells. All right, friends, I think I'm gonna have to call it a day. I'm not sure how many more bites my arms can take. 
I don't know what's going on this year, but the black flies and the mosquitoes are coming out hours earlier than they used to. So I get off work at three and I drive home. By the time I get out to the garden, it was about quarter to five. Um, had a couple of things to do at home or at our rental and um, they're already out. Like they think that I'm dinner. <laughs> Anyways, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for spending time with me and have a great day.